Thus saith the High and Lofty One that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is Holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, with him also that is of contrite and humble spirit, to receive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open now our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. O come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. O come, let us adore him. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. Reading from the book of Genesis. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, we are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up 
up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he swore to our forefather reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld for the Lord to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord, and those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the paws therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of the martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The Father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ, Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, Thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, Help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owned him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and, as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife, children, and all of his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay his debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, 
you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you have not had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the wake of a pandemic, racial injustice, a highly divided society, and political turmoil, and all in an election season, I'd venture to say that forgiveness, as highlighted in today's gospel, isn't exactly what any of us really wants to talk about. And of course, that's precisely why it deserves our attention. Today's gospel lesson is a direct continuation from last week. Jesus is teaching his disciples how to live in community, and he's teaching us and preparing us for the way things will be in the coming kingdom of God. Peter asks Jesus, Lord, if a member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. Now, to be fair, Peter deserves some credit here. The biblical standard of forgiveness was three measures and never any more. Peter has spent enough time with Jesus to know that the the direction that Jesus is going. And to his credit, Peter has suggested an increase of forgiveness to seven times. And that's an increase of 133%. But we learn from Jesus that our own minimum standards for forgiveness are much higher than we bargained for. In fact, we learn that they are immeasurable altogether. So it's not arithmetic. And it must, as Jesus says, come from the heart. To drive home his point, Jesus tells the parable of the unmerciful servant. He tells about a servant who owes the king a vast sum of money. Now, many people have tried to sort out just how much 10,000 talents is in today's market with the current inflation rate and all that. Roughly two talents might be the sum of what an average person might make in an entire lifetime. And as interesting as that is, none of that is the point. The point in the parable is that it is such an astronomical price that no one could ever afford it, let alone a servant. It's not about the quantity of the debt to forgiveness ratio, but rather about the quality. The servant pleads with the king for more time, and the merciful king forgives the debt. Then the same servant whose debt has been forgiven comes across a fellow servant who owes him money, and he acts out in violence, grabbing him by the throat and threatening his life for the three months of wages he has owed. The king finds out and orders him to be tortured until his debt is paid in full. It's quite harrowing, but I think the point Jesus is making in the parables is that we will be forgiven according to the same measure with which we show mercy to others. The unmerciful servant was tortured not because the king was cruel, but because the unmerciful steward treated his fellow servants with violence when he seized him by the throat and threatened his life. This is the same forgiveness that Jesus has been preaching about since the Sermon on the Mount. This past Thursday was the feast day of Alexander Crummel, an African-American man born in 1819 here in New York City, who fought the evils of racism his entire life. Sometimes he triumphed, often he lost. He applied to be a candidate for holy orders in the Episcopal Church when he was about 20 years old in the Diocese of New York and he applied to General Seminary in Chelsea. With pressure from many bishops threatening to withdraw their seminarians if General were to admit Crummel, the seminary caved and denied his admission. He went on to study at Cambridge University in England and was later ordained a priest through the Diocese of Massachusetts. His work led him to Liberia where he tried to establish a national Episcopal church Political unrest and lack of funds forced him to return to the United States. He worked hard to help black Episcopal churches organize as uh, to be centers of worship and education and social service. When Southern bishops proposed that a separate missionary district be created for black congregations, Alexander Crummel created a national convocation to defeat the proposal. The Union of Black Episcopalians is an outgrowth 
of that organization that continues strong today. A common theme in Alexander Crummel's story was a dearth of justice, and yet he carried on with persistence. But justice is something we need to talk about because how we understand justice informs our understanding of forgiveness as commanded by Jesus in today's gospel. The words justice and righteousness can be overly used at times, almost to the point of emptiness. But in her impressive book, The Crucifixion, Fleming Rutledge encourages us to use different words other than justice or righteousness for better clarification to describe God's work and action in the world. And that word is rectification. It's putting to right all wrongs. Now, it is pretty common that people are usually concerned with justice when it comes to their own matters, but are yet apathetic to the plight of others. And usually we work to maintain our own privilege, even at the expense of others. There is untold injustice in the world, and many injustices are worsened with the evils of impunity. God's plan of salvation, God's rectification of the created order, the putting to right all that is wrong with this world, is driven by God's holiness and by God's goodness. It's not a popular notion, particularly among people of privilege. But today we need to talk about the wrath of God. God's wrath is against those who oppose his redemptive purposes in the world. You see, we need God to be outraged at cruelty and at injustice. If God's holiness and goodness isn't offended by injustice and impunity and deception and violence, that would make God an accomplice. And that is not the nature of holiness and goodness. As Fleming Rutledge says, God's anger is pure. It does not have the maintenance of privilege as its object, but goes out, out on behalf of those who have no privileges. The wrath of God is not an emotion that flares up from time to time, as though God has a temper tantrum. It's a way of describing God's absolute enmity against all wrong and his coming to set matters right. You see, reconciliation is the elimination of wrath. When things are set to right, when matters have been justly rectified, that is the beginning of reconciliation, the beginning of forgiveness. Forgive and forget is one of the most unhelpful and trivial phrases around. It has not changed the past. More often, there is a constant reminder of wrongdoing. For example, there's a story about a misbehaving boy whose father would drive a nail in a board every time the boy did something wrong. And when the boy began behaving and being obedient, the father would take out one of the nails. The father says, look at the board, son. The nails are gone, but the hole is still there. Forgiveness is complex. Without rectification, it's just empty. This is our sounding alarm as God's people to work tirelessly for and in cooperation with God's faithful and loving purposes made known in Jesus. Do you recall in today's parable how the king found out about the unmerciful servant? Other fellow slaves saw the unmerciful treatment and were angered at this injustice, and they went to tell the king. When people see something wrong, it's important for them to stand together and to name the injustice. As the community centered around Jesus, the church has to be willing to seek out and name injustices that threaten, our, uh, threaten other people. This is part of our common life together. The church is a collection of sinners, people who recognize our brokenness and our need for God's forgiveness. A community of the forgiven must therefore be a community who forgives and that longs for and cooperates with the power of God's reconciliation, God's rectification of the world. Reconciliation and forgiveness is the hallmark of Christian living. There is no gimmick. There is no quick fix. There is no way around it. 
And if it is genuine and from the heart, as Jesus puts it, it is transformative. Through forgiveness and reconciliation, God changes our lives, and that changes our world. And we know that God is on the move. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name forever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. O God, forasmuch as without thee we are not able to please thee, Mercifully grant that thy Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee in the same spirit liveth and reigneth, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. Mercifully grant that we who glory in the mystery of our redemption may have grace to take up our cross, and to follow him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and that is it, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who didst stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace. So clothe us in thy spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee, for the honor of thy name. Amen. Skies his course doth run. 
sun and shines in brilliant splendor. With brightness he doth fill the day and signifies thy boundless way. My Lord, be praised by sister. stars that with her soon will appoint the glittering heavens. Let wind and air and cloud and calm and weathers all repeat the song. My sister water be and bright and strong to lighten all the night. By Mother Earth, my Lord, be praised, governed by thee she death our sister praised be from whom no one alive can flee woe to the unprepared but blessed be they who do thy will and follow thy command Of your charity, I ask your prayers for all who are ill or in need of intercession, especially remembering Karen, Steve Good, Rufus Hallmark, Hans Mimberg, and for the fires burning out west and all that uh, is being affected by that. I ask your prayers for those with birthdays and anniversaries this week, especially, especially uh, Harold Winlinski and Jean Del Caliano. I ask your prayers for those who are preparing for marriage or the blessing of a civil marriage, especially Angela Lesson and Josh Zykovich. I ask your prayers for those who are preparing for the birth or adoption of a child, especially Zaida Lawton and Vicky and Ted Trigg. I ask your prayers for uh, seminarians and those preparing for holy orders, especially Leo, Lilo Carr Rivera. I ask your prayers for those who have recently died, especially the Reverend Mar Sue Harris, priest. I ask your prayers for those whose years mind falls this week. David Clint Grittam, Aaron Moultrie, Francis Galway, and Gwinnett Angela Edson. 
I ask your prayers for our parish of St. Paul's and for those in our parochial cycle of prayer today, especially remembering our junior warden, Anne boynton Trigg. I ask your prayers for our Diocese of Long Island, for Lawrence Provenzano, our bishop, and for his assisting bishops, and for those in the diocesan cycle of prayer today, especially remembering the Garden of St. Francis in North Belmore. I ask your prayers for the Episcopal Church and for our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, for the Anglican Communion and for the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, and especially those in today's Anglican cycle of prayer. We ask your prayers for the Anglican Church of South America. I invite your own petitions, either silently or aloud. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful and that we show forth our praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised, through thy well-beloved Son, that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. And may the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Hello, good people of St. Paul's. Thank you for joining us today for morning prayer. We also hope you'll join us for coffee hour today at 11 using the Zoom link in this morning's email. You can also use the same link uh, for Zoom for the daily office. Uh, the schedule is included also in uh, this morning's email. And coming once doesn't commit you to coming all the time, so please uh, feel free to join us anytime. Also, we'll be using the same uh, Zoom link this coming Tuesday uh, for our continuation of Ibram Kendi's How to Be an Anti-Racist, reading uh, chapters five through nine. We hope you're able to join us for that. If you are able, also please consider making a donation to St. Paul's, uh, either using the link in the description below or by going directly to our website, www.stpaulscarrollstreet.org. Thank you all so much. God bless you. God be with you. Bye.